Mr. Gree, the legend. No, I didn't iron my t-shirt. I never iron my t-shirts. It's pointless when you're this fat and you fill them out through the D. The more I eat, the tighter it gets. Nice quality. I don't know why you keep touching your nipples. Mine are fine. Beardos, weirdos, boils and ghouls. Now, I have seen a channel that keeps getting shouted out onto Bunkers Anonymous. And I'm not sure why he's getting shouted out. Is he getting shouted out because he's real? Or is he getting shouted out because he's faking? And people are saying this guy gets some really great activity. So I'm led to believe that people think this guy is real. And the channel is Mark Adams Explores. Now, I think I have seen this guy, Mark, in other channels. I've seen him in their videos. And the reason I wanted to look at this is there was a video with a team that he um, featured with. And in that video, in that in those video comments, people were like, can't believe you're working with a faker. I've not looked at this guy. And um, I was quite shocked when I did look at this guy. 220k subscribers. He averages over 100k views a video. Now, could it be that he is averaging this amount because he's a genuine paranormal investigator? I think he started as an urban explorer. So let's um let's cut to the chase. I watched his intro. Phenomenal. Well put together, really well edited, sound design on point. He comes across as a very, very nice guy. The way he, he sort of softly I mean he's a big guy, absolutely covered in tattoos. And he, he's so softly spoken and he just I, I get a good vibe. I had a good vibe. And then I get through the video and I'm like, oh, the same thing. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? And I can't hear shit. I even went upstairs. I unplugged these. I plugged in my son's headset because he's got a really nice Steel Series headset. I'm going to use his nickname because he doesn't like me talking about him on the internet. Chug, I want his Steel Series headset. But the sound isn't um, what caught my attention with this particular video. See, this was going to be a reaction. And I got a couple of minutes in and I'm like, mm, it's the same. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Did you see that? It's always caught. It's always out of shot, and I can't hear it. But people have said, hey, you may be wrong with things like that. You don't know the microphones are not picking that stuff up. Genuinely, the microphones on these investigations can pick up a gnat's fart at 50 yards. In fact, I have to quite heavily edit my own investigations, especially when external microphones are used, because it picks up every whistle your nose makes. Every When you're in an abandoned location, you tend to breathe heavier because there's an element of... I'm going to get caught. Your adrenaline kicks in. And you can hear it in the videos. You can always hear the breathing. I mean, the guys that have been doing this for years, not so much, because they're used to it. But anyway, I watched this video, and it gets to um, E section, and the first glance at it, I knew it was fake. I'm going to play this clip in entirety without me talking over it, without my face, for you all to see. And then we're going to do something different, something that Purple has taught me how to do. I am then going to go into my editing software. And via the editing software, we're going to break down what happens in this video because I get a lot more control in the editing software about what I can see and what you guys can see because a lot of people keep calling me out. Now, I, I wanted to just react to the raw YouTube footage, but people keep saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. So, we'll take it into my editing software. You'll be able to see my editing software so you'll know there's no trickery, no extra tracks layered over it, anything like that. It is just his raw YouTube video and then me breaking down what I was going to say th I think has happened, but what has definitely happened. And then following that, after seeing this um, this fakery and seeing that people think this guy is real, I looked further into his channel. He's visited a place in Wales that I'm fully aware of. I've been planning on going there with another channel for quite some time. And the reason I haven't gone there is when digging into the history of the place, it's made up. And it's not even like a deep dive. Literally, the old house owners are on Facebook like nobody died. I'll show you that. So, without further ado, I'll change screens. Without me talking and rambling and all the rest of it, you guys will get to see this section of the video. And then we'll go into the editing software. And then I'm going to get into his history lessons on places that is strictly not true. Well, I was on the cover as well. No, what was it? I just that noise to alarm it, like something fallen. <coughs> so there we go. The raw footage. 
I have not taken that into any editing software other than the screen grab to put into this video. Now I'm going to open up my editing software and I'll show you my editing software. And this is how I debunk some things. A lot of the time I just watch YouTube and I can debunk it there on the spot. And I can do the same with this video, but I want to show you 100% that this is staged, this is fake. If you have already spotted how this is fake, let me know in the comment section down below what you think it was before you get any further. Okay, so we're in the editing software now. I use DaVinci Resolve. So what are you looking at here? This is my viewing window. And if I move my head, that's the track I've dragged in. And this will be the finished product once I've cut it all up. So what you're looking at here is the timeline. And the timeline is a recording of me doing the beardos, weirdos, boils and ghouls. This with the t-shirt. All the way up to the point where I see. Let me know in the comment section if you've seen what I've seen. And then I stop the video. So then I can bring it into the editing, soft editing software and then show you what caught my attention. Down here, this area, that is the video. And this bar underneath, that is the sound. The lower sounds there, that's their video. Because for some reason, YouTube con comment content always comes quieter over on my OBS. Okay, so we'll break it down as we go. They show this three this they show this video three times. The three times they show it, they zoom in twice. Now when you're watching this area, there's a giveaway there. And there's something happening over here. So if you can spot it played in real time, but I am gonna slow this down. I am gonna go frame by frame. Because it's quite well hidden, but there's a few mistakes being left. One of them's a glaring, huge mistake. See that weird pulse all around this area? From this far out, it doesn't look that obvious, but there's something shunts. And it caught my eye. And then when I zoom in, it'll give you a little bit more. Also, why does the candlestick shadow not move? There is nothing else in this area to give off that shape. And when we zoom in, I got a feeling we're going to see the ridges of the candlestick, etc. And this shadow will probably misbehave at some point. Yeah, there we go. All right, let me zoom in on this. I'm going to zoom in further than they did. Now, I don't know why they zoomed in the way they did, because they give themselves away. This kind of looks like that candlestick, right? I'm still not 100% sure if that's what this is. But there's nothing else that could cause that shadow. And I am utterly convinced that this candlestick has cast that shadow. But why doesn't the shadow fall when the candlestick does? So we go frame by frame. Now, your attention is brought here because this is what moves. But when looking at a video to see what's real and what's fake, look around. Because for fakery to take place or a wire to be used or something, there's going to be a mask most times. So we're right at the beginning of the footage. Candlestick, book. Watch this area. What's that? What black thing has just appeared for a frame there? And then faded out in two frames. Why does it look like there is somebody bleeding through the video? All around here, look. What's happened is they've, they've masked the video. There's two layers of footage. A clean slate of just this video of the candlestick still being there. And then over the top of that is a video where the candlestick is being pulled. They change the opacity, they cut areas out, and then they feather hide that there's two videos being used but watch closely you'll see this dot appear all of these little dots appear this mess here this could be artifacting far out on the camera but what's this what is all this movement here if i didn't know any better i'd say that's somebody moving look at this now you'll notice they are both big guys and they are both wearing black hoodies and it looks like somebody's hoodie with their arm outstretched, has bled through. Look, shoulders, head, arm. And then it disappears again. The candle's already moving here, and there's a little bit more bleeding. And then it's gone. And then something slips here. And I think that's the mask tracking on. Something slips here. Look at these big black blotches appearing. That's whoever stood there bleeding through the mask. 
There's more movement there. All up here. Why is it for a frame here and there? There's a black mass stood here. Because in my opinion, somebody's stood here. They've masked themselves out and they pull in that candlestick. All around, there's a shadow. Look. This entire window frame moves. Why would that window frame move? Now you could say, oh, that's just artifacting. But why does it move while you've got all of this digital noise and black blobs bleeding through for something that's moving over here? Where is the artifact in this side? And why does that shadow not behave the same way? So looking at the shadow, the candlestick starts to move. So does that shadow initially. What is this square area here? Let me zoom in for you. Candlestick, 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 candlestick shadow, I think. Candle starts to pulse and move. So does the shadow. Now this candle is moving and sliding off this fireplace. Why is the shadow not moved? And why is there a square there? Perfect square of digital noise. There we go. This candle is now falling, yet this shadow remains. And you can tell this video has been shot twice because this box twists when the candlestick moves it might be a book actually but watch this corner there's somebody here and this box shifts position everything here is shifting look at it there's a foot there, there look there's a massive square there this box is dancing in the corner it's actually bending up out of frame. Something is appearing there. This shadow is moving because there's somebody there. Now, see, at this point, if I did that, oh, look, there's a mask slip. That's not, that's the max, the box actually moving because the candlestick has pushed it. But once this candlestick drops out of sight, why is that box then still moving? And what is all of this? And why does it look like somebody is bleeding through the frame up there? Now, this is their zoom in, and I've zoomed in on the zoom in. Zoom Inception. Just look at the state of this. And there's a shadow there. Somebody's appearing. There. There's movement over here. There's shit appearing everywhere. In fact, what appears there? It wasn't until I zoomed in this far. I know exactly what that is. There's somebody's arm. It's the, sh it's the opacity showing. The opacity hasn't worked. You can see the full arm. Watch this. There's something reaching over. Reaching over. Swiping out. Swiping out this way. Give it a good knock. That's some look. That's not even a wire. They've literally his arm appears here and swipes this off from behind. Boom! Knock it all off. Leave his arm there. It's okay because the mask will take care of that. I thought there was a guy stood in the corner and that's what was bleeding through, and he was just moving closer to try and pull something that was behind the candlestick and the book. But he's literally put his arm there and just swiped it off, and you can see his arm break through. The shadow of his arm is you see the full arm, but it's. You know, almost see-through. But the shadow is there as well. They have actually masked out a full person walking over, swatting it off the side, and then they've tried to claim that as real. So this video is called Susie's Haunted Abandoned House. So haunted it needs an exorcism. Unfortunately, it doesn't need an exorcism because nobody was ever possessed here and nobody's died here.
Now, Mark gives a full sort of breakdown of the story of the house, and it is completely made up. Because I know this house. It's in Welshpool. It's not that far from a Mackey D's. Because one of my jobs, I used to travel all over Wales. I actually passed that Mackey D's on the way up north to meet Steve for a ghost hunt. And I passed on the way back from my haunted hotel. Now, I'm going to play the intro, and then I'm going to show you just how far this rabbit hole goes. Susie's house. I've seen other teams go here. But listen to what Mark says. What is up, guys? We are back on another abandoned adventure. Today, we're in the north of England, and we're here to check out this absolutely amazing abandoned house. The house has said... That house is in Welshpool. A, I have seen teams go there. B, I've passed that place. Because I've been given the pin to that exact house for me to go and investigate. Why didn't I investigate that house? Because all of the claims, well, in fact, listen to the claims. ...to have paranormal activity. Other investigators have been here and caught some amazing EVPs. They've seen shadows in the rooms, all sorts of different activity. We are here in the little girl's bedroom that supposedly passed away here. And we're... Ooh. I'll probably pop it there. I'm about to read to you from Welsh Pool Community Melting Pot. It's a Facebook group. There is an abandoned house opposite the McDonald's by the roundabout. And on YouTube, there are rumours a little girl died in that house. And it's said to be very haunted. Can you confirm this? Somebody's tagged the owner of the building, or the ex-owner of the building. Steve Rigby, they're on about your old place. Ailey Williams, people talk some shit. It's not abandoned. The house was sold to a development company to build a premiere in. Pretty damning evidence, that. Further down in the comments. Again here. Nobody died there. Owners forced out with little time offered, so they left everything behind that they didn't need. Why would you claim that this house is in North England and severely haunted by a little girl that died when it is a house in Mid Wales where nobody died? <laughs> Certainly no little girls. How deep is this rabbit hole? I have just watched the Ouija brothers go into the Amityville house. That's not the Amityville house. It's a building that could be used in fucking Emmerdale Farm. And everyone's claiming it's poltergeist activity. Somebody was murdered there, tortured there. Horrible, horrible story that happened five miles away. And teams keep going back to these places because they hear these stories and are like, ooh, maybe there's activity here. And then people like Ouija Brothers and Ghost on Trent come out of there like, where's my door slamming? Where's my footsteps? Where's my screams? Where's my levitating things? Where's my poltergeist activity stuff being thrown? Well, it's not going to happen because the place isn't haunted. It's just abandoned. Urban explorers are finding these places and are, are sharing pins amongst themselves. And then the pins find some of these paranormal channels and they make up a history. It's happened with Amateurville. It's happening with the, Susie's house. Susie's house is not real. And you put in claims out that it is 100% real and it is 100% haunted. It's not. It is not real none of it is real you've lied about the location you've lied about the history you've lied about evidence this crap is bad for the paranormal world this crap along with ghost adventures mind seed most haunted really haunted all of that shit is why universities funding has been cut to the parapsychology departments there's very little research going on in the paranormal field anymore because everyone thinks anyone that believes in the paranormal is a kook Genuinely, I wanted to watch Mark's video and be impressed with footage. And what did I see? Somebody moving and breaking a mask and then their arms swipe shit off a fireplace. It is getting really, really difficult to sit through these videos and find real people and to find real stories because every time somebody looks into the history, it's not the history. It's been made up for clicks and views. Biddy, I'm the bad guy. Because I pointed out. So, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I know I'm going to get heat on this one. It's going to happen because he's such a big channel. I'll say this. He comes across as a very nice, polite, well-mannered guy. His editing is really good. His intros are really good. But they're lies. Much love to you all. Beardo, out.